And welcome to our community. Susie Thomas here with you this morning. We are visiting with Kat Peschen. She's from Food Bank and Community Harvest. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Thanks for having me. Okay, lots going on. So <laughs> yes. let's get a little history here. First of all, Kat, you are with Food Bank, yes? Yeah, the Akron Canton Regional Food Bank. And that is has been around for some time. Yeah. Um, you have been there for how long? Almost five years now. And tell me how that all came about. So we were founded in 1982 by a group of community leaders who came together and saw that there was excess food happening in our community. When food banks started happening, there's this beautiful story of a food pantry. And the difference between a food bank and a food pantry, a food pantry is where the food gets distributed to those in our community who are in need. And a food bank is where the distribution happens. So we look at surplus food. We get food from incredible donations, and we're able to leverage the power of those donations to stretch dollars really, really far. Do you get your donations from individuals or from other places? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, in our community, we are so blessed about 30% of all of our food comes from organizations. And we're talking, last year we distributed 28.8 million pounds of food That's across amazing. 500 hunger relief programs like food pantries, hot meal sites, and shelters over eight counties, including Stark County and Tuscaroras County. So at some point, somebody said, hey, we should get together with Community Harvest that collects from the restaurants. They've got a relationship with the area restaurants. Yes, am I getting this right? No, that's perfect, yeah. And someone said, let's put this all together. How did that all come about? Right, so it was uh, because of collaboration with the community foundation, the local community foundation. And everybody came together in sort of this setting, and we looked at how people can work together. And collaboration is that hot word right now, right? And so we realized that we shared the same mission, to feed families in our community. So coming together was a really natural step for us. And, and teaming up faith from Community Harvest is so incredible. And their mission and their values really match the work of the food bank. So we distribute non-perishable foods and also perishable fruits and vegetables. We don't go to the restaurants. We don't have an arm of that. So her coming onto us gave us a new way and this new momentum to reach more people, more families in Stark County alone. There's so many times where you see nonprofits uh, that have similar missions look at each other as competitors right. rather than an opportunity to work together. Uh, touch on that. What, how is it yeah. different and how is this better? So in this community, we found that we shared a lot of the same donors. And I don't, we talk about all the time, who should you support, right? Your food bank or your food pantry? And my answer is always the same. And that answer is both. Yes. Because we are two people doing very different things. But the hunger in our community, in, in Stark County alone, nearly one in four kids will struggle with hunger this year the same in Tusk, and then one in seven individuals will struggle with hunger. And basically, we talk all the time about food insecurity, and that refers to not being hungry all the time, but not having access to healthy and nutritious food at one point in the year. So you could have a kid go home, open up his cupboards after school, and not have enough food in there at one point of the year or daily in the year. And that's why the food bank, the food pantries, and Community Harvest are here to help to make sure that kids have access to the healthy food that they need. When you say those statistics, one in four, one in seven, are those better than they have been in the past? Are they worse? How are we doing as far as caring for our our community members in need. Yeah, those numbers have stayed pretty consistent across the board since I've started about five years ago at the food bank. And we see like some years there's a little increase, some year there's a little decrease. And it, even though the economy continues to grow, we are still distributing more food than ever before at the Akron Canton Regional Food Bank. I think that's what's so hard to understand because we're giving such encouraging information about um, employment right. in the area, that our numbers are, as far as unemployment, are very, very low. And yet you see people, uh, I hear time and time again, there's more need, more need, more need. Help me connect those dots. Yeah, so almost half of the people that we served are senior citizens, our children, people that cannot work. These are our most vulnerable populations. We see a lot of working poor, people that are really trying to make ends meet, but just aren't doing it. So it's it's not people necessarily that are relying on these food pantries or these food banks time and time again. It could be circumstantial. So let's say you lose your job, and then where do you go? Honestly, we are all one emergency away 
from true you know from something something happening so it, we always say at the food bank it is not our job to judge it's our job to love mm-hmm. and i think that's a very beautiful place to be because hunger knows no bounds and knows no limits and it's something i mean think about your dinner table last night and think about sitting down with your family and connecting over a meal there's something beautiful and powerful about that and then as a new mom i have a little 9 month old little man at home right <laughs> really cute as a new mom <laughs> thinking about not having food for my son, I would do anything for him, even Mm -hmm. if it means standing in a food pantry line for two hours, which is sometimes what people do just to get groceries to help make ends meet. But the families that we meet, and that's a favorite part of my job. So I'm on the marketing team at the food bank, and I get to go to these hot meal sites. I get to go to these shelters and meet the people struggling with hunger. And then I write their stories, and I share those stories with people that can make a difference, friends that are listening now, people from our newsletters. And last week, I just have to tell you this quick story. Mm -hmm. I met, a woman, I met a woman named Alba. She was standing outside the food pantry line, and I invited her in just to sit down with me. I noticed she had a walker and was a little older. It turns out she was 90 years old. <gasps> she was amazing, looked wow. so good. But she had been in the fashion industry her whole life, worked so hard, and then ended up, when she retired, living on that fixed income mm-hmm. and not always knowing how she was going to make ends meet. She had some medical bills come through and had to give up her home that she had lived in forever with her Mm -hmm. husband and move in with her daughter and her children. And so wanting to help support the family, wanting to help do some good for her daughter, she comes to the food pantry once a month. And she says, I don't need to come every two weeks. I just want to come once a month when I really need it because I want to save the food for other people. So this is a woman choosing between medical bills and groceries. And now this month, she doesn't have to make that choice. Because there's pantries, there's a food bank, there's places like Community Harvest out there really rallying because of the community that that supports us. Not every elderly person is able to get somewhere, and not everyone is mobile. Do you work in some ways with um, the people who also uh, deliver meals? Like I'm thinking of Meals on Wheels or some of those services. Is there Um, some way that they get food from you as well? Give us an idea of some of the people that you distribute to. Oh, sure. So like I said, we have 500 of the hunger relief programs. Nearly 100 of those are in Stark County. And I would say we have probably about 18 of them in Tuscaroras County. And every single pantry, every single hot meal site is different. The big joke is if you've seen one food bank, you've seen one food bank. Oh, that's good. And that's true, <laughs> like a food food pantry too, right? If you've seen yes. one, you've seen one. Mm-hmm. And 92% of these food pantries, hot meal sites are run solely by volunteers. And more than 70% of them are church-based, are Mm faith-based. And so every pantry operates differently. Some have a distribution. Some have where if you don't, can't make it in that day, they will bring the food to you. So it all just depends. We do work with programs that deliver. And again, if you're out there listening and you're in need of food assistance, I have met so many incredible people that pride stops them at the door. It doesn't let them come in because they think, oh, I'm not that bad. Or, you know, things things are going to get better. But we are there to help you. We are there to love you and to open our arms for you. And we have a website. It's called getfoodhelp.org. Again, that's getfoodhelp.org. And you simply put in your zip code. And then it searches hot meal sites. It searches food pantries right in your area. And, and go and get help. Because I got to tell you, at the end of the day, everybody needs a little help now and then. Absolutely. Yes, and as you say, one crisis, one medical crisis oh, away from exactly. really needing help. Mm-hmm. One job and, loss. But what's trouble exactly, what's troubling is the people who often are the givers, are the donors, don't know how to be the receivers. They don't know where mm-hmm. to go or how to get help. And sometimes it, it hits out of nowhere, a fire or something, right. and suddenly you're in need. And so tell us again, that is getfoodhelp.org. Mm-hmm. You know what I love, Kat, is that uh, so many times um, – People who are working with an organization like this are a little removed from the people that they're serving, but you are not. Right. You're right there really getting to meet the folks and getting to put a face on the hungry in our area for us. Some of those hungry are children, as you say. One in four, did you say, I in did. Stark County? Yes. Mm -hmm. is hungry, that means, what does that mean? One in four is hungry. Does that mean they're going to school without having had any breakfast? Or what exactly does that mean? You know, it just depends. So one in four kids in our community will struggle with food insecurity this year. Mm -hmm. So that means at one point or another in this year, they are going to lack access to the food that they need to strive. And it could be they're going to school hungry. People often think that the holidays are the busiest time for a food bank or for food pantries, but that's not necessarily the case. The holidays are the time that people are thinking about giving, that we receive more than half of our donations 
Friends. It is an incredible. This community is so generous, especially around the holiday time. But we're busiest in the summer because it's when kids don't have access to meals at school. Oh, wow. So we have kids on the free breakfast and free lunch program at school. But in the summertime, their parents now who have providing one meal a day are providing three. Mm -hmm. So our pantries, the lines get longer. The people in need grow because these kids, especially growing boys, you know you have two Mm. boys, how much they eat. (laughs) I have been told to be warned for that with my son. but Get ready. (laughs) And and parents, you want to be proud of the food that you give your kids and everything. So 1% of the food that comes in through the food bank is done so by food and funds drives. And you think of, let's say, a kindergartner going in their cupboards, they're doing a food and funds drive at school, and they're getting out everything they have in their cupboards. I know for me personally, I have baking soda from like 1999 in there. (laughs) And we have a team. Last year, 10,000 volunteers came to the food bank and sorted and inspected and made sure every every single thing that we give out that's from a food and funds drive is something we would be proud to give our own families. How do you make sure everything is within the expiration date? Uh, Even I, who am pretty darn (laughs) careful, have pulled out bad cocoa, which I wouldn't have thought was something that is powdered Mm -hmm. and has a long shelf life. I don't always think of checking that date. How do you make sure everything is fresh and healthy for everyone? Right. We have a USDA guideline standards that we're across the network. So we're a part of Feeding America, which is 200 food banks across the country that help share information with each other to make sure we're getting that best case scenario. And we have a a coworker on staff at the food bank whose main job is making sure that products aren't recalled, that something is is not expired. And we have in our volunteer center, if you come and see us, we have a huge product recovery board that says everything from spices to canned products and how good things are past their expiration dates. But if something comes in open, for example, or if it is torn, we'll either discard it or our volunteers will tape it back together. Do you recommend giving, donating to the food bank itself or to the food pantries? Or again, yes. 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 <laughs> That's a great question. Yes. Again, it's both. You know, if if you live close, if you have a relationship with your pantry, they are the arms getting it out to the people. Our job at the food bank is to make sure that we are that distribution center. So we have 83,000 square feet right past downtown Akron. And we work with manufacturers, places like Smuckers and Mids. When I first started food banking almost five years ago now, I walked into our warehouse that almost looks like Sam's Club. And there was a whole row full of peanut butter. And wow. I remember thinking like, my goodness, this is amazing. Who would donate all this peanut butter? Well, it turns out the label was printed wrong Uh. and it said non-fat. But instead of that company throwing that in the landfills, they donated it to us. Our team of volunteers labeled them with the correct label and we were able to distribute it to our our hot meal sites and our pantries and our food programs. Wow. Mm -hmm. What has affected you the most as far as being involved with this? You know, that's so funny you ask that. I feel like that is a, that's a question that I get asked a lot. Mm-hmm. The first time that I saw the line of people standing for food, and I grew up um, in South Georgia, right? And then my husband's family is very Italian, so I know the power that food has. Yes. And seeing that line, seeing the people, and then seeing, I will never forget Mimi, who was one of the first children that I met walking into that food pantry my very first time, and she was dancing all along the food pantry, just back and forth, greeting everyone. And here I was, you know, three years out of college, not sure, not sure what was going on. And so I just went up to her, introduced myself, said, hi, my name is Kat. I'm here to write some stories of of people. And I just, I wonder if you could introduce me to a few. And she directed me to the most incredible people. And at the end of that first day, I walked up to Mimi and I said, where's your mother? Like, Mm. I have just got to thank her. And she walked me over to her mom and her mom gave me a big hug and says, you know, Kat, I wasn't always a volunteer here. We were a client here too. Wow. And that is the amazing part of this job is I would say half, half of the people that I have met that have been volunteers have received food too. Mm. So there's this a redemptive power that happens when people need something and then they yearn to give back. And that has been just a beautiful lesson personally. Mm. We're speaking with Kat Peschen. She's from the uh, Akron Canton Canton Regional Regional Food Bank, Bank, (laughs) which has recently Mm -hmm. uh, collaborated with Community Harvest. They have Mm -hmm. merged. We're going to get more information about all of this after these words. You're listening to Our Community.